going on guys welcome back to the channel hi psi tv today we are bringing a new vehicle to the family uh you know we've already got the packards and the buick and the tahoe and ryan was kind enough to sell me a car which we are going to go get right now but we have to stop at autozone first and get a battery for it and ryan lives like six hours from here so this is going to be a long video i'm not going to tell you what it is yet i'll show it to you when we get there i'm excited about it um ryan he doesn't seem too excited about it so yeah, on our way to Apex right now, we gotta throw a battery in the car, maybe an alternator, depending on if it's charging or not. And then I'm gonna drive it back up here to RPM, and uh, I'll have it home within the next few days. All right, so we made it to Ryan's place here, and um, something just barked at me. I don't know if you guys are ready for this, but you know that I have this tattoo on my leg. And I've always wanted one of these things, so here we go. A uh, 1996 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome black Maryland car, which is a little scary. But yeah, that's it. So this kind of resembles my grandpa's Cadillac that he had when I was growing up. And uh, Ryan has given me a good deal on it. So we are going to work on this thing for a few minutes and see if we can get it running and charging and all that stuff so I can drive it home and it doesn't leave me on the side of the road. Hopefully. It's probably fine. See? You gotta give, give it the old, the, old, uh, the old 1980s smack. <clears throat> Oh yeah, LT1. Woo. LT1 power. All right, guys, so 96, still rear wheel drive, LT1, 4L60, which I'm very familiar with. Seems to be charging. Uh, Ryan thought it might need an alternator, but it turns out the battery might just have been bad, so I put a new battery in it, whopping $90. And yeah, let's take a walk around this thing real quick. So 96 Fleetwood Brome. So this is a Maryland car, like I said, so there is gonna be a little bit of rust underneath, but really the car as a whole is pretty clean. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to get my buddy Thad to detail it, you know, clean it up as good as he can. Of course we have air shocks, Maryland tags. Ooh, historic tag, dang. No inspection. Now I wonder if this pinstriping was factory. Cause that is pretty custom. Looks comfortable. 
I mean, it's got a traction control light. I don't want it. Wheel speed sensor somewhere. All that rust. So did that weird noise go away? Which one? The whistling noise. Uh, when I drove it, yes. It was replaced by a high pitch. Figured out what that went to. Normally it goes in here. I'm guessing it's not important. We seem to have caught the EVAP lighter bin from here. Oh. Does it still have a smog pump on it? Uh, yeah, it does. It's a smog pump right there. Yeah. Hot diggity dog. It's alive. Cool. So I read something on this car. It can tow 7,000 pounds. It's on a truck frame. Yeah. It's on so the same frame as an S10. When they made this car, that was like their claim to fame is you could put your camper behind it and it would tow it because it has air shocks, which is all right. So um, two things with this car. First, we thought the alternator, but I guess it just needed a battery. Has a little bit of a miss at idle, so it's going to get a tune-up. And then uh, there's something else. Oh, the air conditioning doesn't blow really cold. So we're going to look into that as well. Oh, door locks. Yeah. So when you're locks. driving down the road, and I'll show you guys this on the way home, the doors will unlock every once in a while, like when you hit a bump. So uh, Ryan was telling me that there's a short in one of the doors. Should be fixable, no problem. I'm excited. All right. So here we are in the Cadillac. And you'll probably hear the doors unlock here in a second. Uh, so far, so good. The air conditioning blows okay. Actually, gonna roll this window up, and we're gonna try to ride with just the AC. I remember this Cadillac feeling from when my grandpa had a Cadillac just like this. It was comfortable. You could compare it to driving a couch. That's about how I feel right now. I feel like I'm in my living room with a steering wheel in front of me. Oh, see, there go the door locks. Got to figure that out, I guess. And I've got the GPS going too, just so you guys know. But yeah, this thing is huge. I don't know if the camera is going to do it any justice but this thing's got to be like 18 feet long and the doors are constantly unlocking which is okay because i'm comfortable so like i told you guys before my grandpa always drove cadillacs and he had i think it was a 96 fleetwood brome but it was of course beige with tan interior and uh he used to pick me up all the time from my house take me to his house so i could help him in the yard and do stuff like that so i've ridden in one of these cars a lot Making a left. So, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this car yet. I wanna get the little things fixed first, try to get it cleaned up. Uh, the dash pad is cracked, which I'm not really gonna worry about. I just wanted something comfortable to cruise around in. And it's funny, if you look at the dash right here, you see the white line over overdrive. Apparently an old lady owned this car, so that was to help her find where overdrive was, I'm guessing. So I've got about a 45 minute trip home. Hopefully I make it. Um, the battery looked like it was charging. So no alternator issues, just needed a battery thrown in it, which is all right, because the alternator was rather expensive. As far as LT1 cars go, I do not know how to work on them. I know they're a modified small block Chevy. Uh, I know they have OptiSpark issues, but this car has 168,000 miles on it, probably on the original set of plugs and wires, probably on the original OptiSpark. Ryan didn't know much about the service history of this car. So I'm gonna get it to RPM. I'm gonna do the basics to it, make sure that it's good to drive, get the title in my name, and then we might start modifying this thing. So I've looked into putting some wheels on it. I kinda wanna bag it. I kinda wanna put air ride on this thing. I've never bagged a vehicle. Uh, for those of you that follow the channel, you know that I have a Packard that I plan to bag, but that project is taking a little bit longer than expected. This car, hopefully will be quick and easy since it's already running and driving. So we're gonna take a quick trip back to RPM and I'll uh, talk to you guys when we get there. All right, so we made it back here to RPM Motorsports, the home for all your GM performance needs. The Cadillac made it, no problems. I did disconnect the battery because I noticed the doors were trying to unlock even when the key was out of the car, so I don't want the battery to go dead. But over the next week or so, like I said, minor stuff plugs, wires, get the AC working right, fix the door locks, and then we'll go from there. But what I want to know is, what do you guys want to see? You want to see this thing on some 13-inch Daytons? 
bagged hydraulics you want to see it on some 22 inch Dayton's bagged hydraulics let me know what you want to see uh, for those of you that follow the channel you'll notice I'm in the back brace backs hurting a little bit but I've been working a lot so to be expected I get x-rays again in two weeks hopefully everything looks good but be on the lookout for this guy ready to go hopefully on the ground I'm excited about this project guys And of course, at the end of every video, I ask you guys to please comment, like, subscribe, be sure you follow the channel, be on the lookout for this car, doing more stuff with the Buick, doing stuff with the Tahoe, doing stuff with the Packard. We will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.